and get this started. There's still people hopping on, but I'm just going to get this started and see what's going on. Hi, Erin. I just saw your comment. No, it hasn't started, but we're starting right now. We had everybody muted. Um, welcome. Thanks for hopping on, everybody. My name is Amanda Stain. Um, I am one of your diamond leaders in Fire Tribe and Freedom Legacy, and I am being joined tonight by um, Jordan Splinter, who is a soon-to-be diamond. Thanks, Jordan. I'm pretty excited. So basically just a little bit of a, I'm going to give you a little bit of an intro about myself and then we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to pass it off to Jordan. Um, before I get started, I do want to tell y'all we have a chat going. Um, so please feel free to make use of that at any time. You can um, put questions on there, comments, anything you want. And we're going to go back through and have some question time at the end. So if you're more comfortable with the chat, please feel free to um, comment or question on there. Um, just a little bit of an intro about myself. I joined the company. I signed on December 31st of 2016. Um, I had just had a baby. He was about one month and 20 days old. Um, consequently, he is turning one tomorrow. So we are very excited about that. Um, yeah, I joined December 31st, again, just having a baby. Um, I was a little bit of a slow starter, had some postpartum um, depression, postpartum anxiety going on. Anyways, I was a slow starter. Um, but what I will say is once I caught the fire, it caught on quick. So um, I was added to a couple Run to Ruby pages in, I think, the month of February or March, maybe. Maybe it was March. Um, I should remember this, but anyways, so I was added to a couple of those pages and once I got on there and got accountability and, um, was running with a couple other girls, it really gave me motivation and it gave me drive. Um, and I really like, I, so I, I promoted, I skipped executive, I'm trying to think now I skipped executive and I got Ruby and then I skipped Emerald and I got diamond. Um, so I went diamond my sixth month, um, which means that I got the $5,000 bonus. Um, and I'm not going to say too much because I'm not going to um, give away all my stuff for tonight. But anyway, so I, I that was in July. Um, and I am looking to go double this month. Um, I am going to turn it over to Jordan. She, to, okay, actually first as a little bit of an intro. What we're gonna talk about tonight are the do's and the don'ts of going diamond. So what Jordan and I did is we got together over the past few weeks and we discussed um, some things that we have seen be successful in our own businesses, but also some things that we've seen in other people's businesses that help them be successful. But we've also addressed some of the pitfalls. So this one is gonna be kind of fun because we're just gonna tell you all what not to do. Um, and like I said, if you have questions or comments, please um, pop up. So she's going to be talking specifically about the social media um, side of do's and don'ts. So Jordan, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for all the time that you put in and we're excited to hear from you. Just tell us a little bit about who you are first and then you can hop right in. Okay, hey guys, I'm Jordan. Um, I joined It Works back in March and I enrolled under Brittany Hayes. Um, yeah, I went, um, Ruby within less than two months when I first started and just kind of started off with like a bang. At least I felt like it was a bang. Um, and everything was going awesome, super pumped up and everything just seemed to be lining up perfectly. I'm like, yes, this is awesome. Just watch Brittany, watch Claire, follow them. And I got this. Um, and I hit like midsummer. And a lot of stuff just started happening um, with my family back home in Virginia. We had um, a lot of family members getting sick. And then we had um, three family members pass away within um, three months. So it just kind of really knocked me off my feet and like knocked me for a loop. And um, so this, this Zoom tonight is kind of interesting because I joked um, with Brittany the other night. I was like, I think I should be listening to this Zoom. I don't know if I should be doing it. But at the same time, it's really good for me, too, because um, just kind of hearing myself say it, I guess, and really thinking about these things and seeing um, the do's and don'ts, reminding myself what I need to do is exactly what I need right now to um, get myself back on track. Um, I am Ruby, but I'm charted for diamonds, so it's like right within my reach. Um, so this is going to be perfect for me tonight. Um, yeah, 
I think that's it for my introduction. Do you want me to jump in and start on? Yeah, you can go right ahead. Okay. Um, so like Amanda said, I'm going to be talking about the do's and don'ts of social media. And I have some notes written down just so that I don't ramble too much because I kind of get off topic and talk a lot um, when I start talking. So um, if you see me looking away, that's why. Um, yeah, so like I said, I'm on, I'm on this learning journey too with everybody that's on here. Um, I'm sure leaders as well as everybody that's on this team, we're all learning every single day. We all are facing things that, um, you know, one day everything is really awesome and you can get the worst news of your life and it knocks you right off your feet. So um, I love that about this business that we're all in this together and we're a team and we're here to like encourage each other to, um, you know, to stick with it and not give up and to be real and honest about like where we are in our journeys. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna jump in. Um, as far as social media, do's and don'ts. Um, the best way that you can rock out with social media is just to make sure that you manage everything like with strategies. If you're going in and you're just kind of like going on a whim with things, which I've definitely tried to do, it doesn't work. It gets overwhelming really fast. And um, before you know it, it's the end of the day, it's end of the week or the month. And you're like, crap, I haven't done really anything that I wanted to do this month. I had goals in mind and I didn't meet them. Um, and I think that just kind of going in with a strategy really helps um, break things down and get where you want to go. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go through this list and I'm just going to knock them out one by one. And if you guys have questions, just write them in the chats. Um, like Amanda said, and we'll talk about it. Um, we can answer any questions you guys have afterwards. Um, so if I'm talking fast, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just going to go down the list. Okay. So some of the do's is, um, it's to write out your goals, whether it's your goals for the day, your goals for the week or the month. That really helps you, um, like I said, when you have those like written down and you see them and you can physically check them off, that is super helpful. That's been really helpful for me recently, just seeing what I have to do, making sure I check it off. Um, one way that you can do that also is to make a posting schedule. Um, I was watching a training earlier today and they were talking about, um, it was Jocelyn Yates and she was talking about her um, 333, I think is what she said, 33 schedule where she does, everybody does it in a different way. She'll do, she said that she does um, three product posts and three business posts in a day. Um, and then I've heard Brittany say before, she does hers a little bit differently. She does a personal post, then a product post, then a business post and kind of repeats that throughout the day. Um, but that is, that's helpful to have that in mind. Like, okay, it's not overwhelming. You can say, all right, right now I just need to focus on a personal post or a business post or whatever it is. Um, Another tip is to set alarms like on your phone for every two to three hours to remind you to make a post. Cause I know if you guys are like me, I get so caught up and I have a little toddler running around and I'll have a really good post in mind that I'm going to do. And then sure enough, it's like four hours later and I haven't posted it. And I'm like, well, shoot, it's too late now. Like I, you know, I get in my head about it. So setting alarms on your phone um, is a really good way to just, keep yourself on track and when that goes off it's like ding okay right now um let's see another tip is to when you're making posts just to keep them clean and clear and simple um more is not always more it can overwhelm people it can be too much for them to look at um if it's too whatever people are just going to be more apt to scroll right by it um, also with that, keeping your page clean. So regular grooming of your Facebook and your Instagram, which can be going through and deleting before and afters, um, 24 hours later, making sure that you're going through and, um, deleting, like if we've had BOGOs, any type of sales, um, et cetera, things like that. Make sure you're cleaning those up because that can be kind of confusing to people too, to go back and say, Hey, I want to catch that sale. We might not have it, um, going on anymore. And so one of the don'ts is, I feel like this is a huge one, no ads. Like don't be a walking it works ad on your Facebook. Like if you, I've heard somebody say this before and it stands out in my mind like all the time. If you Google it works and click on images and it comes up, if that's what your Instagram looks like or your Facebook looks like, 
no, 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 no. Like, oh my gosh, no. People are going to be like, mm, bye. They're not going to read any of your stuff. Nobody wants to see that. They want to see you. They want to see pictures of you, pictures of your face. Um, you can do, you know, selfies throughout the day because people are attracted to you. They're not going to be attracted to, you know, the big black, green, white, bling, all that. Um, they're going to see it get turned off by it and say, you know, they're going to prejudge it. Um, they may experience before, I've heard about experience, but if they're seeing pictures of like your face, your kids, um, pictures of you, like if you're going to do a product post, like a picture of you holding the product and it still catches people's eye because they see you, it makes them stop and like, oh, what is Jordan doing today? Um, yeah. And another tip is to, um, that kind of goes along with that with showing, you know, showing who you are and your face and everything is just to share your story. And um, I know for anybody that I've talked to about this before, you guys know, like, sharing your story is so important, whether it's um, on social media or in person or, um, you know, you never know whose life you can touch by just sharing something really vulnerable and being really open about things that you've been through. Because you might feel like you are like the only person that's ever been there, but I can promise you that you're not. And I can promise you that there's a hundred other people out there who are dealing with the same thing. And that moment of you just being open and vulnerable is going to make a world of difference. Um, and it's going to, you, it's just going to grab them in more. It's going to grab their heartstrings and pull it. Um, so just kind of telling your story, telling it as a story and that grabs your audience's attention. It grabs their heartstrings and kind of pulls it. Um, do you want to interject anything, Amanda? Sorry, I just muted it because my kiddo is like going crazy out there watching Moana. Um, no, not yet. I just wanted to say I had mentioned that I love the thing about the alarm and that is something that I keep meaning to do for myself and I keep forgetting to do it. <laughs> I need an alarm for my alarm. Um, because yeah. like you said, sometimes you think of like a really good thing that you should post or like I'll take a picture. Like if I'm at gr the grocery store or something and I'm like shopping, I'll take a picture of my cart or some something like that. And then you get in the car so you can't edit it and you can't post it. And if you wait too long, it's like, it's going to be too late because people know like where you are. So if they know that you're like at the church and then you're posting a picture of like, I'm at the grocery store, like it is important. So like, I think setting alarms for yourself, like you could do it, like you said, every two to three hours or like set an alarm for yourself for like in 20 minutes, like, okay, I need to remember to do this. That's great. Love that. Yeah, I totally agree. I can't tell you how many nights I'm like, oh, I have such a good idea for this post. And then it's like after midnight. And everybody on the East Coast has been asleep for like three hours. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, alarms. Except for Brittany. Um, okay, so just some other tips are to make sure you're adding to your network daily, Facebook and Instagram. That's super important because if the same people are seeing your post every single day, you know, your, the interaction is going to go down. The interest is going to go down. Um, so just making sure that new people are seeing your stuff every single day. That's something that um, I struggle with. I forget to add people and I'll get in my head and I'm like, why, what is going on? Like, why is it so slow right now? And then I remember, okay, it's been like a week since I've added people, you know, or it's been two weeks since I've gone in and deleted out people who are not accepting my um, friend request. Can you just explain so, what you uh, mean by that? Because I know that I never knew about that until it was like almost too late and affecting my business. Can you explain what you mean by going in and deleting? Yes. So um, there's a way, if you're on your phone, it's a little bit harder. At least for me, it is. I have to go in like through Chrome or whatever internet app you have. Um, but you can go on your Facebook and go to friend requests and actually see outgoing requests that people haven't answered yet. Um, and what happens is the longer that those sit there, the more like the algorithm picks up on it and your visibility goes way down. Um, Facebook sees that you're sending out all these friend requests, people aren't answering and they think that you're spammy. So they're gonna, they're gonna be like, okay, well nobody wants to see her stuff. So if you're going in um, regularly and deleting those out, I think I've heard people say before that they do, um, they wait like a week and I'm sure it's different for each person. Everybody has their own preference. Um, but yeah, just going in and deleting those out will boost your visibility and more people will see your posts. Awesome, thanks. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one other don't is, I think I kind of hit on this a little bit. Um, don't just post like strictly information. Uh, make sure, like I said earlier, make sure that you're like sharing your life, you're sharing your story, you're being, um, what's the word? You're being like personal with your, with your audience. Um, because if people are just seeing information, if it's just word, word, like too wordy and no pictures, nothing to like grab their attention, they're going to scroll right by it. Um, and then I'm almost done. I have just a few more. Um, let's see. Another don't is, um, let's see, I might be able to just kind of combine these two. Um, don't post a ton of like filler things on your Facebook. Like if you love cats, that's awesome. If you love dogs, that's awesome. But if you're posting about that like all day, people aren't going to want to see that. They're, you know, it just kind of turns people off to like looking at your stuff. So, um, or like if you're constantly sharing things, um, I know for me, like if I'm going through my Facebook and I see people like, or I go to look at somebody's Facebook and in the last five months, all that they've posted are like, they're sharing videos or sharing political things or sharing not nice things, whatever it is, like, I immediately I'm like, oh, I don't really want to see your stuff and I'll unfriend them. So um, just keep your, like I said, keep your, your Facebook and your Instagram clean. Um, I guess that really goes more towards Facebook, but. Well, I just not. want to interject there um, real quick. Uh, I love what you say about not posting all the sharings, like all like sharing videos, sharing links, sharing articles. And the thing of it is, is there's nothing wrong with sharing them. And I never thought about it at all until one zoom and I can't remember who it was, Claire or Alyssa or somebody said, it's okay. We're not telling you don't do it, but maybe only do like once a week or something like that. And the more that I thought about it, the more I thought maybe it is kind of just like a don't. Like if you want to post something, that's fine, but you need to put your own spin on it because the whole point of our social media accounts, like for the point, for the um, purpose of our business is to build our brand and to like promote ourselves because people are purchasing us like they're built they're buying our brand they're buying us so if we're sharing all of these videos and all of these things first of all it makes it look like you're bored and do nothing all day it makes it look like you're scrolling through um what is that buzzfeed or whatever it makes it look like you're doing that um so that's not exciting that's not something that attracts people but second of all like it's not you it's not personal it's not raw it's not like it's not something that people seek out and it's not something that it's ultimately going to build your business. Like it's just not. Okay. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, you're fine. Go ahead. That's a really good point. I think I heard somebody say before, like if you just really love recipes, instead of like sharing somebody else's post about a recipe, like copy it and write your own thing on it and make it yours. So I like how you said that. That goes very along with that. Um, Okay. Another tip is to just be consistent. And that's something that I have to remind myself of constantly because I get, I will get so upset at myself and I'm probably way harder on myself than anybody else would be. But, um, if I have really bad days and I'm not consistent and I haven't posted or whatever, I totally beat myself up. I'm like, what in the world? Like I have one job today <laughs> and it's to at least post on Facebook one time, you know? Um, but just trying, you know, doing your best to be consistent. And the reason, the reason that's so important is because it builds trust with your audience. Um, the longer that, you know, if you're, if you're posting, you know, once every, every week or once every couple of weeks, or even once every few days, you know, it's kind of wishy-washy for people. Um, but if you're, if you're posting daily, if you're consistent with it, if you're talking to people consistently, you know, even if they're not like commenting or if they're not messaging you right away, you know, months can go by and you might not see like this one person might not say anything at all. But what you don't know is that they're watching you this whole time. And some people are just naturally skeptics. You know, they're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know about this girl. Or they're like, I don't know. I don't want to support somebody that they're going to be, um, you know, gung ho for this business one day. And then next week they're like, not doing it anymore. You know, people don't trust that. People don't want to support something like that. So um, regardless of whether people are interacting, you know, they're watching you. They're always watching when you post things on Facebook. And the more consistent you are and the longer you're consistent, it's going to build that trust with them. 
It's going to show them, okay, she's serious about this. This really does mean a lot to her. It means a lot to her family or whatever the situation. And they're going to be more apt to want to support you and support your business and be a part of it if they see that you're not just, because there's, I feel like there's so many different types of like just stuff that people get into these days. Like all, there's all kinds of different businesses that people pick up here and there and they're like selling this one day they're selling this. And that's not like, I don't trust those people. I'm right, like, Oh, exactly. what are you doing today? You know, like you're not sign and up I'm like, numbers. where did that come from? Sorry. I just wanted to say I love that so much. Like you're not going to sign up with that person. I've had two different people specifically tell me that they watched me for a while and um, that they've got like six different people that they know from different parts of their life, like from different areas of their life that sell it works. And like they knew that they wanted to join it works, but they didn't know who they wanted to join with. And like, that's mm -hmm. going to be the difference. Like they're going to see this person is consistent. She is not flaky. She's building her business. She's driven. She's progressing. She's growing like those. That's the kind of thing that people want to join that team. Like people don't want to join a team that's staying stagnant. People don't want to join a team. Like you said, that's wishy-washy. And I'm like, yesterday I was selling LuLaRoe and today I'm selling lip sense and maybe tomorrow I'll sell it works. Like that's not, that's not a team that you want to join. You want to join a team that's on fire and like a moving train, like jump on the train. Sorry. I'm getting like yeah. all excited. <laughs> no, you're good. Go ahead, girl. Say it. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. Um, before I started, um, back in March, it was like a year before that, that I was actually interested in it works. And I, I was interested in what I was interested in the wraps and they, oh. they were like, crazy mysterious to me because I'm like, where do people get these? Wraps? <laughs> I hear about them and people are talking about them. And my trainer at the gym, she's like, I sleep in my wraps. I'm like, where the heck do you get these wraps? And I could never find anybody that sold them which was like crazy to me. And I finally reached out to somebody and I was like, Hey, I'm interested in this. Can you talk to me more about like, how do you make money in this? You know, I was like super interested in it. And you know, the, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to say this without, I want to sound respectful. I'm so thankful now that I didn't. And at that time it was, I love voice messaging by the way, because the, the person that I talked to like over a year ago sent me like, a novel, y'all, a novel telling me like all about how you make money and all this stuff. And I was like, never mind, never mind, that's too much. Never mind. Um, and then I'm thankful now because I look like I look at that person's profile today, and not only do I not see them posting anything anymore, but they're they've been in like three other businesses since then. So, you know, that just kind of goes back to the same thing, like staying consistent. Um, not jumping around and building that trust with people because people want to see people want to see that you're serious about it and that you care about them because if you're wishy-washy in your own business they're not going to trust you to take them to their own financial freedom so okay anyway Love um, okay and just a couple more points is um, let me see oh Download picture editing apps. Photo editing apps is huge, 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 huge. Um, I know I have an, I have Android phone or whatever. I have a Samsung. So I use PixArt, but I know that a lot of iPhone users use PicTap Go. Um, and if anybody, I know Brittany uses it. Um, Amanda, I don't know if that's what you use or not, but if y'all want to, you can type out like what your favorite like filters um, in the comments. Um, people use... Visco, um, word swag is really good, um, to make like really catchy, like wordy pictures. Um, but using like the photo editing apps is so important because people want, people want to see like the thing that's going to catch people's eye, I'm trying to figure out how to say this, is going to be, you know, bright, clear pictures, things that like stop them in their tracks when they're scrolling. You know, um, if they're looking at, if they're scrolling by and they see like a really dark picture or it's blurry or fuzzy, or you're like squinting to try to see like, what, what are they holding in that? Is that a product? Like they're not gonna, they're not gonna want to talk to you. Um, so just making sure that you're, um, when you are doing pictures that you are making them, you know, not look fake. We don't want to look like we're, um, you know, misleading anybody or that we look like Barbie dolls or whatever. Um, so make sure it still looks like n real and natural that you're not looking like crazy. 
Um, but the more like clear and bright it is, it's going to look more professional. It's going to, um, it's going to be really positive. It's going to be a positive look like for your business, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, I think that was about it. I think I pretty much hit on everything. The last two things were just show your, show your daily life, like let people get, um, um, you know, called in to wanting to like watch your every day. Like, even though I'm in the business, I love seeing Brittany's posts every day. Like, even though I know, like, I know the product stuff and I know all this, like her posts still catch my attention because they're, they just, they just do. I'm like, interested. I'm like, Oh, what's she doing today? Something's going to be fun. You know, so just showing your life, not just posting product all the time or saying, you know, join my team all the time, but just showing your life and then not being negative. Don't post negative things. That was my, that was my last point. So I love it so much. And I love what you said about how you even get excited to see Brittany's stuff because I get excited to see all of your guys' stuff. I get excited to see everybody's pages and I think yeah. the reason that it is, is because we just live in a different time now. I feel like I'm shouting and I probably don't need to be. <laughs> um, we just live in a different time. Like people connect in different ways. People form relationships in different ways. And like, um, it's just important to like be part of that. If you're trying to have a business that's thriving through social media. And I kind of feel like that's exactly the same. I'm going to like step on one of my toes actually for my points, but I feel like that's the same for, um, how we participate, um, as a team within our pages, because sometimes you may think, Oh, I don't need to comment on that. I don't need to like that. I don't need to do that. But that's how we're building our business. Like that's how we're connecting. That's how we're building our teamwork. Um, and I'll touch back that later. Um, so thank you so much for doing the social media part of it. I totally agree with what you said when you said that you feel like you need to just say this out loud for yourself so that you can remind yourself, um, and how you need to be on the zoom. I feel like that every time I do a zoom and I honestly feel like that every single time I do coaching calls and every time I like check in to do like monthly strategy with my team every single time I'm like, okay guys, this is what I'm telling you. Um, but I'm also preaching to myself. Like I am sitting here reminding myself and like keeping myself accountable to you that this is what I'm trying to do. Like, this is my goal. Um, so my portion and what I want to touch on with you all tonight is managing your business with a strategy. Um, it's difficult to think about like an overall paradigm strategy for our businesses because it's kind of like, um, it's like an abstract thing because we don't have a building that we go to. Like whenever I worked at Jared's, I would go into the store, I would sell rings, I would sell diamonds, you know. It's easy to strategize on that because it's things that you can see with your with your eyes. Um, but for us, I think it's a little bit more difficult because we don't have a building, there's no brick and mortar, but it's just as important to strategize every single bit of what we're building in our business. Um, and the first don't that I wanna to touch on, I'm gonna to start with the don'ts because I think they're more fun, is don't be afraid to dream big. Um, and as a matter of fact, you should try to dream big, like look for the big picture dreams, like seek them out because what we do like as humans or what I do, what I think a lot of people do is we let ourselves get into a box. We let ourselves think little and it's because we're scared to step out of our box and it's, we're scared to, um, to think bigger. Um, but what I have to say is Everyone says, and like all the way down from Mark Pentecost, like, give us a year, we'll change your life. Trust that. Like, do you believe that? Do you actually believe that? Um, do you believe our founder? Like, do you believe the CEO? Do you believe our leaders? Do you believe Claire? Do you believe Alyssa? Because if you do, you need to be dreaming like you believe that because it can change your life. It's not just paying for your gas. And that's great. Like, that's fantastic. I was talking to my mom about it yesterday because I saw somebody post about how um, oh no, it was a video. Um, yeah, it was a video that Lori Willimon, I don't know if she's on here, but she did where she said that it's really relatable when you talk about like gas purchases. That is so awesome. And I'm not saying not to do that. I totally think that's great. Um, and I think that that's important to do on a regular basis, but dream bigger than that. And as a matter of fact, like do a physical dream board. Like I challenge every single one of you that's on here today um, if you want to send me a picture of it, I would love that. Um, I'm actually going to read you mine because it's a hot mess. It was like a marker and a piece of paper. Um, I challenge you guys to send me a picture of your dream board. Um, 
for no reason other than I would love to see it. Um, if you want to chat about it, that's cool. Send it to me, send it to your upline. Um, make a physical dream board. First of all, the reason that that's important is because it's going to keep you accountable. If I say my dream board, like our house is on my dream board. We live in an apartment right now in downtown Dallas. Um, and if I have that up on my wall and I have friends that come over and, you know, I explain what the dream board is or whatever, people ask you, hey, so when is your lease up? Oh, I don't know. We're just going to stay here again. Oh, that's interesting. I thought that was on your dream board. I thought that's what you were working towards. As I'm, you know, like it is. That keeps you accountable to yourself and to others. Um, it provides motivation for you because it reminds you of those big things that you want. It reminds you of how important it is. Um, and it reminds you of your whys. It helps you track your progress when you can check one off. Like um, if you can check off like a trip to Disney or if you can check off like paid off student loan, like cross that sucker off, it tracks your progress and that helps motivate you too. Um, and it demonstrates your success. It helps you, um, it gives you a vehicle to demonstrate your success to your followers. Um, the next do that I wanna do is do print out your physical chart um, every single month. And the other thing that I want to say about that is do write on it every single day. If you are not touching your chart on a daily basis, that's an issue. Um, it's important to do that because you need to be reminding yourself of where you're working. So if you're signing loyals, you need to know where are you putting them on your chart, which boxes do you need to fill, how much is left in each box. And that's important because that helps you plan for how you're going to support your team as well. So when you're going diamond, it's not just you. You're supporting a whole team underneath of you, um, and you're leading them from the front. So you need to know what's going on with those people below you so that you can support them in a way that's going to be effective for you and for them. Um, let me just see what I wanted to say. Oh, on the chart thing, always print out the one ahead as well. Do not aim to maintain, aim to promote. Um, first of all, they say like, if you shoot higher than if you miss, then you'll still be at the right height or whatever. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying print out the next one because you are going to promote to the next one. If that's not your goal, I, I mean, let's just say that's not your goal. That cannot be your goal. So I'm going double, but I already have my triple chart printed out. And even though I missed it last month, so, okay, like last month I, I was still, I was trying to go double last month as well. So last month I had my double chart and my triple chart. This month, on the first of the month, I went down to our leasing center and I printed out, well, two because I'm a perfectionist, but anyways, I printed out two of each one of those. So I printed out the double chart and the triple chart again, and I refilled them in, even though I already had the other one because things change, um, things move around, and it's important to do that. You need to be touching your chart every single day. Um, do be a product of the product. I'm sure you guys hear this so much that like you're so sick of it by now, but um, it's so important to be a product of the product for so many reasons. First of all, you try new things, um, which helps you because you can provide testimony to people who ask you. And like, seriously, everyone asks me whenever they're buying something because it's people who they're buying it from you. If they wanted to buy weight loss products from USN, they would get in their car, drive to the mall and buy something from USN. They're buying it from you for a reason. They want to know your personal testimony. They want to know your experience with the product. If you don't have experience with the product, then you don't have that upper hand and you might lose that sale because that person, like it's easy to purchase. You can buy, I don't even know what it's called. You can buy all kinds of stuff for, um, similar products. You can buy hair, hair growth things from Walgreens. You can buy any of these things. They're coming to you for a reason. Um, so make sure that you are in a position where you have personal testimonies um, and where you are a product of the product. Um, and it's not a big deal. Like if you haven't tried everything, like it takes a while before you can try all of it, but you can always go ask somebody else, ask your upline, ask on one of the team pages and um, ask for somebody's personal testimony and borrow that because that speaks volumes too. When I was new, I would use a lot of the um, testimonies that Brittany gave, or I would go back through like freedom legacy and like search in the search bar on there, put like um, gluten. And if you put like gluten, everything about gluten is going to pop up. So if somebody asks me, Hey, do you know if shake is okay for people who have a gluten allergy? First of all, you could just know that from the product coach, but I'm getting myself distracted. Um, 
Another thing that it's important, reason that it's important to be a product of the product is because it becomes part of your routine in like your daily routine in a way that it simplifies your posting. Um, an example of this is I drink a shake. I, I recently started doing this. I didn't do it before, but I recently started drinking a shake every single day. So every single day I have a chocolate shake with greens in it. The fact that every single day I know I'm going to have a chocolate shake with greens in it makes it really easy for me to post about shake or greens because I already have them. Like I already, I know I'm going to drink that. Like I am going to have it like, and it makes it super easy to post about that. If you're cleansing, like it makes it so simple to post about cleansing because you're already like touching it. It's not like you have to think, hmm, maybe I should post about something. Let me go look in my cupboard and see what I have. No, you're already drinking it. Um, and it also provides like a level of authenticity because people know she drinks the shake, like she drinks the shake and she, she knows about it. Or like, for example, Brittany's pregnant and she posts pictures of her with a shake. Like that, that provides a lo level of authenticity to her potential market because they know she is actually drinking this. So whenever I, or like, for example, whenever I was still breastfeeding and I was doing cleanse and like posting about cleanse. People know that I took cleanse while I was breastfeeding. People know that I did greens while I was breastfeeding. Like that provides you a serious level of authenticity. Um, and it just becomes part of your lifestyle whenever you're a product of the product. I hope I'm getting, I'm getting like all fired up because I, I get really excited about this stuff. So I hope I'm not stressing you guys out. <laughs> if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to put it in the comments. Uh, okay, my next do is one that I'm gonna be super fired up about, so just hold on to your hats. Do take responsibility for your position. Those of y'all who are in this video, you know what the name of it is. It's do's and don'ts of going diamond. So y'all are either diamond, or you're going diamond, or you want to go diamond. So I'm just gonna say this, like to whom much is given, much is required. Now, I don't know all of you, so I don't know all of your beliefs, um, but I am a Christian and I believe that God has put me in this role. I believe that this is something that God has allowed to be part of my life. And I believe that that um, means that something is required of me. Furthermore, like I personally believe like your leaders invest in you. Um, and when I say you, I'm actually meaning me. Like, <laughs> like my leaders invest in me. Like they take time and energy to think about me and like what I am doing in the month. They take time and energy to think about how they can help me improve my business. Like they serve um, selflessly throughout the month to support us in a way where we have these pages. Um, and they, they do such a great job of like supporting us. They're always there to answer our questions. Um, they're always there. So just take responsibility for the position that you're in um, and step up. Like certain things are going to be expected of you when you're in a position of leadership and whether that be Ruby that you're in or executive or your, your, um, diamond or triple, like there are certain things that ex are expected of you and they're expected of you for a reason because we are on a team that's super successful and on, like we know, or the leaders know, like, like for example, if Claire tells me something, I pretty much am going to take that as gospel. Like she knows what's, what's going to make you successful. Like, so if there's certain things that's expected of you and she says you should do something, it's for a reason. Um, so like along the lines of taking responsibility for your position, I have a couple semi like on your points. Don't ask lazy questions. Um, so don't ask questions that you know that you can find the answer to. I have to say I'm sometimes guilty of this. Sometimes I even do it myself. I'll be like, oh man, I know I, I know I have that somewhere, but I can't find it. Challenge yourself to just, like stop that. Don't ask questions that you know you can find the answer to and um, or that you know you should be able to find the answer to. Like for example, I, I'm saying this to all of you right now. If you have been in this business for more than a month and you ask me if there's gluten in a product, I don't even know what to say to y'all. Like get on the product coach, like check if there's gluten, like you know where to find if there's gluten. And like, it doesn't matter. It's not like it's that big of a deal. Like, but like, come on, like aspire to be higher, like expect more of yourself. Like, don't ask that, like go look in the product information, look down the product coach, like you can do this. And that's also kind of just like providing yourself with like a level of, um, 
gosh, like self-esteem, like I've got this, like I can figure this out. I know how to figure this out. Um, and then the other thing on that is like the other side of that coin is do take initiative in chats, pages, and groups. So help people find answers if you can. I remember the first time that Brittany told me that I should be doing that, like, or she actually told me like nicely. She was like, you can do this if you want. She's so sweet. But, um, I remember thinking it was exciting and I remember being honored actually. To, and then like trying to find answers for the pages, like trying to find answers for the things on freedom, um, freedom legacy. And like, it's exciting if you know the answer to something, cause like that means that you can be a leader to someone else and like you can serve someone else. So, like go ahead and do that. Like if you see something or if you scroll down through and like, you know, maybe you don't know the answer, but you know how to find it. Like, first of all, find it, give them the answer, but then also like, show them how to do it. Like tell them how to do it. You can send them a personal message or whatever, like teach people. Like if you give them a fish, you feed them for a day. If you teach them how to fish, you feed them for his life. Um, but do take initiative in chats, pages, and groups. Um, a leader participates. Leaders are not silent. A leader is going to be the first person to comment or reply on messages or posts. Um, and the reason that I put this on here is because it's really important to welcome new team members um, and to like congratulate people who are promoting. Um, and it's also really important to just be part of the team. Like a lot of times our leaders will post something on one of the pages and like nobody replies. First of all, that's disheartening for the leaders, like because they are um, spending their time and energy trying to help promote your success. Um, they're trying to support you. So like I challenge each of you guys, like be active in your chats. Be, even if you're the only one who does it, and even if you're that, you know, like that kid in the class, like be active in your chats. Like if somebody posts something, reply to them. Um, if your leader posts something and asks like a question or just like posts some kind of like encouragement, like reply to that, like be the first person to comment or like, or reply back to a message or a post. And the reason that this is important, it goes back to, um, what I touched on earlier is this is our business. We don't have an office that we go into. We don't have like um, tea time, or I suppose that's not something that happens in America. We don't have like lunch time um, where everyone goes and like sits and chit chats and like has coffee or like coffee hour, like coffee break. So like, this is how we connect. Like, this is how we build teams. Like we connect through Zooms, through pages, um, through like chats, through groups, like that's how we connect as a team. And the stronger that we are as a team makes us stronger individually. Like you will grow as your team grows. So like, it's very important to support like the growth of the team. Um, be active in your team chats. Um, builds community. I'm sorry. I'm like checking my notes. Builds community. It builds community. It builds a sense of team and it builds esteem in other teammates because they know that they are not alone. They know, like, even if it's something that has nothing to do with them, they'll see, hey, there's like 16 people that commented on this thing earlier. So it, it, it makes you feel like there are other people doing the same thing as me today. These are humans that I know who have the same goal as me today. Um, and there's just something reassuring in that. Um, okay, my next do, and I'll get down off my soapbox for a hot second before I get up on a new one. Do show up to Zooms, family calls, and events. Um, a leader shows up and I, again, I don't know who it is, Claire, Alyssa, all of them, all of my, um, my big heroes, they say you have to show up to go up. And I really think that that's true. Um, sometimes you may feel like, and I actually used to feel like this, and it's not that I thought that I knew everything, like, oh, I know everything. I don't need to go onto the Zoom. I just thought, okay, I have my game plan. I know how to do the things I need to do. I know how to sign up a loyal. I know how to sign up a distributor. I know how to move my customers. I know how to do this. I know how to change my auto shipment. I've got this. Like, But the thing of it is, is there could just be one comment that you'll hear in a Zoom that you've heard everything else before, but somebody could say it in a different way and it's just gonna stick with you. Like, like the thing about um, you have to show up to go up. Like I think that every single time I see something about a Zoom, I'm like, I need to show up because I wanna go up. Like, even if I don't have time or like the baby's crying or like I'm trying to make dinner, or, like my hair is a hot mess. Like, I'm like, oh, I have to show up. I have to show up because I am going up. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to say, and this is my personal opinion. So I'm going to say that this is taken with a grain of salt, but I think it's really cool when people are in Zooms and they turn on their video. So all of y'all who have your video on, thank you. Like it just, like I said, it promotes a sense of community and like 
I definitely go on sometimes with not a stitch of makeup on and my hair all crazy with my top knot. And, you know, it's just, it's nice to see, it's nice to see all spaces. We love to see you guys. Um, the next thing I want to talk about for Zooms is do take initiative with Zooms and contribute. Um, first of all, I just want to say this, you have something to contribute. Even if it seems like the topics that we're discussing have been beaten into the ground, um, or you've already done something like that, or you've already talked to your team about it, like you have something to contribute. Every single month that, you, that you're, let's say you're going for diamond this month, there's something in your month that you could share that's going to help someone else. Um, and like, that's what a team is. A team is when you can be a certain part of something for someone else. So maybe they don't need to hear anything else, but like, I'm rambling. I'm, what I'm saying is not making any sense. So sorry guys. But, um, that's what a team is. Like a team contributes what you can, and maybe it doesn't seem like anyone would need that specific experience that you have, but it's important to share it because someone is going to benefit from it. Um, and sometimes it's not just you, like it's not necessarily about me that I'm doing this zoom tonight. First of all, what I do want to say though, is it's like with, um, when I was in college, I was a tutor and I will say like the classes that I tutored, I did better in those classes than I had ever done. Um, when I didn't tutor the class, if that makes sense. Like if I wasn't tutoring that week, I didn't do as good on my exams because it's a level of accountability that you have to be accountable to someone else. So you need to make sure that you are informed enough that you can inform others. So with the zoom, that's kind of like what it is. Um, so first of all, like I'm learning from doing the zooms, I'm learning a lot about public speaking. I'm learning, um, I I'm growing in confidence, which comes out when I'm speaking to potential distributors. And when I'm speaking to potential customers, like that is just something like you get used to communicating in a way, um, that's going to promote your success. Um, let me just think, what was I going to say? Oh, so it does, it does help you, but it also helps other people. And like, that's something that we're called to do. Like, that's something that you need to take responsibility for your position. Like you need to be doing the things that support your team. Even if it doesn't seem like something that's important to you, that's something that supports your team. And that's the way that our business grows. Um, and again, this goes back to like what I say about like, I take um, what Claire and Alyssa and Brittany say is like scripture, um, not to try and be sacrilegious. So I apologize. I really am kidding. Um, but I take it as like gospel. So if you guys say like, you need to be on the Zooms, like, I'm going to be on the Zooms. And if you tell me that like my business is going to grow from me doing a Zoom, I want to do a Zoom. Um, and like what I said, y'all have something to contribute. You do have something to contribute. Um, so pull your weight, aspire to be more than the position you're in. So if you're not, um, let's say you're going Ruby um, and you think, oh, I can't do a Zoom. I'm not even Ruby. No, you can't. Like you can do a Zoom. Um, do the things that like scare you and do the things that, um, are in the position above you. Like if you think you have something to do, like seek out your leaders and like take initiative to like be, be more than what you think your position is supposed to be, if that makes sense. <clears throat> um, okay, next do. Do the things you don't want to do. When we were on our call, I don't know if y'all saw, we got to go on to a private coaching call with John Maxwell, which was awesome. He said, I do things I don't want to do every single day. And that was something that really stuck with me because it's John Maxwell. He, first of all, he's hugely successful, super popular. He's like, he's so wise. He's a millionaire. Like, I, I don't even know if he's probably like a billionaire. I, I really don't know. He's very wealthy. Like he's pretty well off. So the thought that he does stuff that he doesn't want to do every single day is kind of crazy because it makes you think, it seems like you'll think, oh, I need to, I need to get to this certain level. Like I need to go double because then we'll have enough money that then we can buy a house and then I won't have to do this and I won't have to do that. No, there's always going to be stuff that you don't have, that you don't want to do, but it's in your best interest to do. So just go ahead and do the stuff you don't want to do. Um, sometimes it's hard. Like whenever I first started posting my story, I did not want to post my story. Um, I was not active on social media before I was part of this business. I am a relatively private person, probably doesn't seem like it, but, um, I did not want to post that. I did not, 
uh, for a lot of reasons I didn't want to post it, but like it gets easier. And like I was on a zoom and somebody said, post your story tonight. Like just do it, do the things you don't want to do. And like you will benefit from them. Um, okay. Here's another one. And y'all who have tuned out and are getting sick of my ranting, this one is practical. So here, I'll draw you back in. Okay. Change your auto shipment date to be like in the beginning of the month. Change it from the 25th. I have no idea why I waited like seven, eight, nine months to change mine. I have no idea what I was doing. Like so simple. Change your auto shipment date to be like the first couple days of the month. Here's why this is important. This will change your month. This will make you less crazy because you will show as commission qualified from the day that it runs. So like if you're running an ADBV auto shipment, which you should be, let me put that as another do. Do run an ADBV auto shipment every single month. Like just do it. Like you have to do it. There's do it. But anyways, if you do it in the beginning of the month, your boxes in all of your reports are going to show that you're commission qualified and it's going to make your charting process and just make everything for your, um, gosh, I'm like losing my mind because I can hear the Moana in the background. So I apologize. It's important to do because it makes all of your reports, um, easier to read throughout the entire month. You don't have to stress out and wait until the 25th and see, okay, everything is going to change then. Cause then it's going to show that I'm commission qualified and it's going to show that, okay, now it's going to show that I'm Ruby. Now it's going to show that I'm Emerald. No, change it, change it to run the first week of the month. It doesn't make a difference anyways. Like, and those of y'all who say, okay, well I get paid on the 31st, blah, 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 blah. Just, just budget like backwards, if that makes sense. And just put it to be the first week of the month. It will, it will make you so much less crazy if you are like me. Because I would wait until the 25th and watch it and be like, oh, it says I'm not commission qualified. It doesn't show that I'm Ruby. It doesn't show that I'm Emerald. It doesn't show anything. And now, as soon as it runs, I have mine set to run on the 4th because um, I didn't want it to be, at first I thought, okay, I'll do it on the 1st. But I thought, okay, I want to make sure that I remember to change it from the previous month or to change it to whatever I want to get. So I, I have it set for the 4th. Um, but I highly encourage you guys to do that. Um... Yeah. Okay. okay. Next do, do you go to your upline with concerns? Don't like get down and out and don't like suffer in silence. Don't quit. Talk to someone. We are on a team for a reason. Like this is why we are a team. There will always be a solution to your problem. Um, so if you sit there in silence and let it get worse, that's on you. I have an example of this. Actually, um, Jordan talked about it, deleting outgoing friend requests. It was like my third month of working the business. And I was not getting any responses from my stuff. Like the first couple months that I was in, every time I posted something, I got a ton of people messaging me, a ton of people commenting on it, lots of people like liking it. And then all of a sudden I got nothing. And I mean nothing, like not a single like, not a single comment, not no messages, like nothing. And I'm like, what is going on? And like, I reached out to Brittany and, um, she basically just told me like, are you deleting your outgoing friend requests? I wasn't active on social media. So I, I had no idea that was a thing. I did not know that that exists. I didn't know you could do that. Um, so no, I wasn't doing that. I had like, I had like 300 of them. I don't even know how many were in there. It was ridiculous. Like so many. And some of them were so old from like when I very first started building my network each day. Um, so there's always a solution and it might be something super simple. Like Go in and delete your outgoing friend requests. Um, maybe not. Maybe it's maybe it's more complex problem, or maybe it's something that you need like continued support on. But don't suffer in silence. Like we are here for a reason. Go to your upline if you're not comfortable going to your upline, um, or if there's something else that you need. Like reach out. Like we have sidelines. Like Jordan is my sideline. She's not directly above me or below me, but she's like beside me. So she's like my sideline sister. Like seek help. Like there is always a solution, and there's strength in numbers. Like that is why we are a team. Um, okay. The next thing I want to say is something that we hear all the time too. So I'm not going to touch on it very much, but don't forget your why. And that really goes back to the, um, the dream boards for me, because when I see something physically in my house every day, it makes it more concrete. It makes the goal more concrete for me. Um, and it makes it more real to me. Um, next do, do be yourself. 
Don't be your upline. Don't be Claire. Don't be Alyssa. Be yourself. And the reason that that's important is because people know when you're being fake and people know who you are. Okay, like maybe some people in my social media account don't know me for real. Like they don't know me in real life. But the people who do know me in real life are going to know if I post something that's not genuine. And honestly, like it just gives you like that bad taste in your mouth. Like don't try to be somebody else. Like be yourself. If you're funny, be funny. If you, I don't even know, like if you like to cook, like be real. Like don't try to be somebody else. Don't, um, don't try to make your posts like copy somebody else's. Don't try to do like what's trending. Like do, it's fine to like participate in trending activities because I do think that sometimes that can boost our algorithm, but it's important to like be genuine and to be yourself. Um, I want to talk about working your business consistently. Jordan talked about this a little bit, but I'm going to talk about it more from like the business standpoint rather than the social media. Don't post like every other week. I, I, I put don't post every other week. I know nobody is actually posting every other week. Like that would be ridiculous if you're only posting like once every two weeks. But when I say that, I'm just saying it like you need to be, you really need to be posting every day. Like, um, it's like an example of a business, like a coffee shop opened up directly outside our complex. Like we live in an apartment and this coffee shop has been like, it was going to open for like two months now. I was so excited about this coffee shop. It's like the anticipation has, has been building. Come to find out this coffee shop is open from seven 30 in the morning until 2 PM, 2 PM in the afternoon. That's ridiculous. Like, that's not when people need coffee. People need coffee in the morning when they have to get up so freaking early that they have to go like work out or something like at six. I don't know what y'all do at six o'clock in the morning, but people need coffee at six o'clock in the morning. And mamas who stay up all night with their kids, we need coffee at like three, like around the end of the day when I'm like, I can't make dinner. I, I need like a drip. I need coffee. Like this coffee shop is open from seven 30 until two. Like that is absurd. And that's honestly, like, that's the perfect picture of what it's like to post, like, every other week. What are you doing? Like, what is the point? People aren't going to know what you're doing. I had one of my very first customers. Um, I posted something, but I didn't post, like, what it was. So I posted, like, something about weight loss and or the cleanse. It was cleanse. And she commented me and she's like, Hey, what product are you talking about? And I told her, and she's like, what company are you with? So I told her I'm with it works. And she said, Oh, I actually have a friend that sells it works. I think you think you have a friend that sells it works. Like I hope that no one, none of your friends, like tell someone, Oh, I think my friend Brittany sells it works actually. So I'll probably have to buy it from her if she still sells it. No, like they need to know if you're selling it. Like, they need to know that it's part of your lifestyle. Like it's important that you build your business every single day in a way that's like strategic so that people know what you're about. Like, okay, I'll calm down now. Um, next thing that I want to do it or say for the do's is do be the one to check in with your upline. Don't wait for them to check in on you. Um, and when I say check in on you, it's not like they're micromanaging you. Um, it's strategic support. Like that's what we're doing. We're keeping each other accountable. We're monitoring success throughout the month. Like do be the one to check in with someone so you can do it when things are going well and just say, okay, this has been going really well. These are my challenges. Um, do be the one to check in with someone. Excuse me. My allergies are out of control. Um, the next thing that I want to say goes with that one. Do strategically support your team below you. So in going diamond and getting ready to go diamond, you're going to be building a really big team. It is vitally important that you strategically plan how you're going to support your team. Because if you don't, there's not going to be a team for you to support eventually. Um, it is important to check in with them on a monthly basis. I usually try to do it in the beginning of the month to check in with each and every single person that's working their business. Now I say that because that's what you're going to do with the people that's working their business. Those people who are not working their business, it's still important to check in with them. It's important to let them know that you are thinking about them and that you are here for them if they are ready to jump back in. Um, and also if you know certain things about what's going on with them, you can even say, again, be genuine, like be real. Don't just try to come up with stuff, but like, 
tell them, listen, I saw that you posted something about how you recently lost your job. And I just wanted to let you know, like, we are still here. Like you still have a business here. Like we are here for you. Like if you are ready to hop back in, I will be here to support you. And I will be here to help you with an action plan. Um, do you help your team strategize growth? So when you call and you have those conversations with every single team member um, or every single leg, because if you're going diamond, it's going to be like, for me, it was like 70 people, probably not going to be possible to do every single one, but you need to be doing the, the promoting legs and all of the heads. Um, strategize growth. So when you have those calls, look at your book, say, okay, um, you are Ruby now. So that means that we are looking at your Emerald chart, have their Emerald chart, like have a copy of it, like see what their Emerald chart looks like, ask them to send it to you, help them strategize their growth, help them tangibly make goals in how they're going to succeed and meet their goals and keep them accountable, keep them accountable to those goals. And some people it's different. That's why it's important to know like the colors, like if people are green or yellow or red, um, you don't want people to feel like you're, like you're pushing them too much. Um, like for example, if somebody's really yellow, you don't want them to feel like they're being attacked or they're being pressured. But if somebody's red, like they're going to want that, they're going to want that from you. Um, and then I wanted to stay, say also, do get and stay excited um, with your team when you message your team, um, when you're checking in on progress with potential loyals, with potential distributors, with your existing loyals and distributors, like get excited. It is exciting, the business that we're in. And like the possible growth potential that we have is really exciting. The fact that it can change your life and 12 months is super exciting. The fact that like we are looking at houses, um, when we were staying in a one bedroom apartment months ago, like that's really exciting. Like get excited and stay excited because it is contagious. Um, and then the last thing that I want to say, sorry guys, my nose is like kind of congested. I'm struggling with allergies, but the last thing that I want to say, this is a do. Let me just make sure that I've got it. Do all right, so hear me when I say this, ready? Go to conference, do go to conference. Like that's, that's all I need to say on that. Like you need to be going to conference. I have never been there because I was not actively um, participating when we had the last conference, but, and I had like just signed, but you need to be going to conference. Like there are so many statistics that they're posting in the Elite and Freedom Legacy pages about um, the, like percentile of um, growth. So like someone who goes to conference is like 85% more likely to be diamond than the people who didn't go. I'm saying this wrong for sure, but like it is a very, very, very big deal. Um, for the reasons that I already said, like it promotes team building. Like that is what a team is. That is what our team does. Like there is going to be so much momentum and so much motivation. Like that energy is contagious. And like, you want a piece of it. Like you want to be there. You want to be around people who understand you um, and understand like your goals for every single day and can push you and help you um, to set even bigger goals and have bigger dreams for yourself. Um, yeah, so that's what I wanted to say. I'm gonna reach back through and look and see. If anybody has a couple different questions, whoa, there's a lot. Okay. If any of you guys have a question that you want to ask, um, go ahead and turn on your, um, your speaker and you can just go ahead and ask. I'm going to look through here. Hey, sister. Hey. Um, <laughs> you are rocking it tonight. I love it that you guys are just seriously blowing me away. Um, but I wanted to ask kind of like more specifically what your coaching calls, um, might sound and look like, like what you hit on, um, specifically maybe for a promoting month, um, would really love to know kind of what topics you definitely hit or what points you make with your team. Okay. Awesome. So first of all, I apologize, but who am I talking to? Cause I can't figure out who's, who's unmuted. Emily Roby. Okay. Hey, Emily. I would turn my video on, but I'm straight up nursing my newborn. So not all y'all need fine. to see that. No. <laughs> okay. So, um, my coaching calls, basically what I do is I sit down with my chart, um, before a coaching call and I look to see exactly what's going on with that person. Um, so I'm going to usually print out their chart. 
I usually fill it out myself for what I think it would be because I have copies of everyone's charts from the previous month that they've sent me. So I'll go off of that and see if it's still where I think it is. Um, so I just have that as a reference for myself. And again, I'm, I have the chart for their next promotion, not right. their existing chart. I have their promotion chart. Um, and then I'll just have a look at it to see how is the volume doing. Um, and I also have a look through their downline. So before I'll call, I kind of Facebook stock people and I will see who of their distributors is working. How are they working? How are they doing? Are they participating? Are they consistent? What are they doing? And I try to think of, um, like, I suppose, like, I try to think of things that would be helpful for that leader, but I also think of ways, like, if I was them, what would I be saying to their team right now? Like, how would I support the team that they have? So if I see that there's someone who's posting that's posting inconsistently, I might challenge them um, to have a conversation like that about posting more consistently with the person. Um, or I would... I'm trying to think about the last one that I had. Setting timelines. Like sometimes people will say, oh, I plan on going Ruby by uh, December. Um, why? Why do you plan on going Ruby by December? Like right. what exactly? I, I, I don't know. I ask a lot of questions. So that's kind of what it ends up being, honestly, is me asking a lot of questions um, and just trying to strategize with people. Um, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question. What was the rest of the yeah. yeah, no, I, you told, I love it. And that's kind of like what I do too. I just didn't know. I feel like it's like a baptism by fire and leadership. And yeah, there's, I mean, you just kind of got to roll with it and figure right. it out. Honestly, with the coaching calls, like I do think it's important to strategize and not just be like speaking nonsense to people. But at the same time, I kind of think part of the importance of the coaching calls is showing up and like doing life with people. Yes. Um, on a regular basis. Like I am here and I am calling you. Like I'm going to call you every week. You're in my top line. Like I'm going to call you and we're going to talk about something that is somehow um, an income producing activity. Like we are going to strategize on your chart. Like we are going to figure this out. So even if it's like, even if somebody's like doing really, really well um, and all you could say is like, oh, you're doing really well. Like there's always something that comes out of that conversation. Like I usually just try to think like, think, I do do's and don'ts. Like I do that with myself. I do that with my team. Like I do do's and don'ts. So if somebody is um, doing something that's just not working, um, I'll challenge them to have a conversation with that person. And I help strategize with how to have difficult conversations. I think that's something that one leader, like you'll definitely need to do, um, especially as you go diamond is help your team have difficult conversations. Like and help them do it in a way that shows support um, and not like being pushy, if that makes sense. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. I think I got muted for a second, but I think I'm back now. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I'm just seeing if anybody else has a question. If anybody else has one, go ahead. I like what Brittany said, surround yourself with all the runners and follow in the footsteps of those who are where you want to be and you will get it. Um, I really think that that's true. Like momentum is contagious um, and energy is contagious. So if you're surrounding yourself with people that are posting all the time, um, like for me personally, like, and I talked about this and I made myself like a little side note and I didn't even touch on it, but in talking about working your business consistently, like we all have stuff like life is messy. It is messy. It just is. And like, there are things that happen. Like there are big things that's happening on our team. Like people get sick. Um, there are people have losses. Um, there's challenging things going on. There's illness. There's like family stuff. Like there are, we have stuff. Everybody has stuff. Um, but you need to be working your business in some way. Like every single day you need to be working your business. And it's not because you need to be able to show that to me or to Brittany. You need to be working your business because that's what you need. Like, that's why you have a why. Like, remember your why. Like, um, I think it was John Maxwell that said this too. I don't get paid to try. Like you don't get paid to try, unfortunately. Like if your why is like, you want to build a house, like you want to be able to build your dream house with your family and like have your own home. Like, unfortunately, like, 
it doesn't matter if you're sick. Like I have a sinus infection. I'm much better because I got antibiotics, but like I have a sinus infection and an ear infection. Like my paycheck doesn't care. Like I get paid for what I do. So I get paid for if I post it and I get paid for if I sign someone. So like if you, the whole reason that I was saying this, I'm like getting myself off track is like when you surround yourself with people who are go-getters and goal-getters, that is contagious. Like you are in the pack with the runners. Like I ran in college, but like you'll see people posting. And like, for example, you may know like Brittany is sick. Like Brittany has crazy morning sickness and she just posted like, come on. Like, and it's not like a competition thing. It's, it's more like a support thing and like a team thing. Like, like, Oh my gosh, I'm sick. I'm sick. I know that I'm sick, but she just posted. I need to post. Like I can do this. I can do this. Like it is contagious and it is something that will pull you along. Like it's a train that's going like get on the train. Um, let me just see if there's something else. If y'all have more questions, let me know. Cause I can't find them. I've never not run two auto shipments monthly. Yeah, Claire. Okay. So Claire said she's never not run two auto shipments monthly. We have also never not run two. So we do mine and we do Louise every single month. And she talked about how like, even when they're super broke in the beginning, she still ran them because she had the vision. Yes. And it's important, I think, to be able to tell that to people. I think it, it provides you with a level of accountability for your team to tell them I've run my auto shipment every single month and my husband's like, that is just what we do. Um, because we believe in the business. We believe in being a product of the product and um, there's 50,000 other reasons why that's important. Um, okay. I'm not sure if anybody else has questions, but if y'all are still on, thank you so much for staying on till the very end. I hope there was something that was helpful. Um, I hope that there is some way that we are supporting you guys going diamond. Um, and we're super excited. I'm so excited to meet you guys all at conference cause I've only met a couple of you so far. So, um, those of you guys who are going to conference, I cannot wait to meet you. Um, and the rest of you, hopefully I'll see you soon at one time, uh, one team, one mission or something like that. Thanks guys.